And Mary, what I want to ask you about is I'm very intrigued by your what you call the web of support that your team members have. And I think it has great relevance to healthcare. Well, Fred, I can tell you that um, these are not my ideas. Um, I happen to work for a woman who's written a, a book called Gender and Competition. And she came up with these theories based on what she had read through social psychologists. And it all has to do with the world view in terms of how men and women see the world. And, and social psychologists can go through the theories. But what we did is we took their ideas and, and Kathy's feelings in terms of working with women, that women are socialized in terms of being motivated and, and they're connected to others. How they see themselves in the relationship to others, where men are more socialized in terms of the ladder, where they are on the ladder. And, yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, I think most of us have were coached by men. And so we adopted those strategies. And yet, men and women are different and I think we embrace the differences and understand if you motivate using the web, using the connectedness to each other, to their coach, then a group of highly connected strong women, they'll go through the wall for you. They, um, that's how they win. If on the other hand I coach them as if they were all males and wanting to always see themselves in terms of their relationship with others on a ladder, it doesn't mean they're not competitive. Women are highly competitive. It's just how best to motivate them. And so that's what we've used and it's worked for us. Well, I, you know, I think that that model um, for healthcare teams makes a huge amount of sense because when one person dominates, the others are fearful to contribute and therefore you don't get the energy and the resources of all those people working together. This once I saw written, and it makes so much sense in healthcare and in coaching, is that they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And with women especially, wow. they don't want to be coached at, they want to be coached with. And so if they believe I care about them as a person, I care about them as a volleyball player, then they're much more open to anything I have to say that's coaching related. Now, how do you foster this kind of relationship among the team members? Well, we understand that every player has to have a role. And so and it's my responsibility to give them a role so they feel a part of that group. When there is a player who doesn't feel connected, she, maybe her role isn't defined or she's not good enough yet, or for whatever various reason, when she becomes an outlier, then then that's, she's miserable and the group struggles. But if she understands that even if she's not a key contributor on the court, if there's something she brings to the group that enhances the group and it's recognized, acknowledged, and it's appreciated, that's how you foster the group setting. I think this is very important because we have that issue with nurses. When nurses come on a team, they don't feel part of the team often and if we can make them feel valued and part which they are, an integral part, uh, then they will feel a greater identity with the team. And what happens is, what's our goal? Our goal is to improve the health of patients. Um, just as important, in fact, a little bit even more important. Much more important. <laughs> Much more important than anything. Than winning in volleyball. Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. Mary, those are incredible insights and they have great applicability to healthcare. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fred.